State. And he had one of the most impactful plays on special teams you'll ever see. But let's that one guy you turn the TV on to watch play. And like you said, he's the orchestrator of this whole thing. And they'll set up Coleman on first down. Little wide light and maroon. And Coleman and Carson should be a good one. Yes, they should. Nice job by Mike Novell getting Coleman the ball early. First play of the game, letting him know that he's got to be a big part today. There's a slant. And a first down catch made by... And in the first two plays of the game, they get the ball to him, letting Wake Forest know that they're not afraid of that matchup. that they throw to you. I know he's kicking himself for that. A rollout now for Travis. Once again, the catch made by Vince in their corners outside. I don't think that they thought that Keon Coleman would get the first four passes of, of the football game, though. Wake Forest chose blitz on third down and seven. They'll bring five. Well protected is Travis. Now he floats back. Buying time. There's not a DB in the country that can cover for five, six, seven seconds at a time. That's the beauty of Jordan Travis. Four-man rush. Actually, a three-man rush with a spot. He'll take a shot on time. Kentron Portier getting an opportunity in... A loss of five back to the 17. Rodney Hill back to the 13-yard line, so it will be third down and 11 as Jacob Roberts makes it so far. Number four, Keon Coleman. Travis has a lane. Needs a block. Well, if you're Jordan Travis and Keon Coleman's not out there on the field, you can just take matters into your own hands. And we saw them do this against Duke, right? This is a nice little run-pass option for Jordan Travis. Throw out to the left. Nobody secures the edge to the right. He just bleeds out there. You can never forget that this guy's legs are a problem. He is already off to a fast start today. More rushing yards and more rushing touchdowns than any quarterback in FSU history. And he keeps on. And Coleman, one of the best receivers in the country. NFL scouts are going to be locked in to this matchup all day long, and somebody's going to make today. So Dave Clawson has his number one quarterback out of fall camp, starting against Florida State. And they'll start with that slow mesh on the ground. Justice Ellison up the middle. And RG. And they know with only eight completions that Duke put out there, they can potentially run the ball all day today, but they got to establish that line of scrimmage. And number 80, Jamal Banks, is going to be a big part of that for Wake Forest. Nearly popping it was Justice Ellis. Four starts, 11 touchdowns, 281 yards passing as he rolls out here and fires one right sideline. When your quarterback is going through a rough patch and things aren't going the way that you thought they would, players around him have to step up and start making plays. That was a good throw. Moore's got to make that catch. Third down and seven. Griffiths, pocket collapsing, and he's got nowhere to go. Daylight disfield. For Wake Forest, so they run a sub out late with the play clock winding down. Still have three seconds to get the snap off, and they do. Kevin Mora with a spiraling kick and a good one. Wow. All the way back to the 12-yard line and a knee on the ground going off the national championship run, especially with the way that they dominated Duke in the second half last week. And they'll start at their own 12-yard line here. First carry for Trey Benson. Gets to the sideline and gets bumped. Really good for Jordan Travis and Bob. You didn't get the memo? It's Halloween. All the Wake Forest fans are dressed up as Florida State fans. <laughs> Very convincing. Travis picks up a first down and carries tacklers. Tough to bring down. 
out to the 30. Too many of those types of carries from your quarterback, but Jordan Travis is certainly on a mission today. Looking for Coleman, incomplete. Tightly guarded by Kalen Carson. Wow, get to her in a little bit. I think oh. they were trying to make you feel old, Bob. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Kevin, thank you. I'm now balder than I was a minute ago. Come on, Claiborne. Bye. Yeah, you never know. And we're here in sleepy Winston-Salem. Florida State has already come out hot. They got to make sure that they try to put this Demon Deacon team away early and don't let them hang around. Because if they hang around, they got a good shot to win. Griffiths, this time well protected. To the sideline on a dive, incomplete for... But Georgia versus Florida, yep. you know, Georgia has not looked as dominant as they, they have in past years and have a little, some questions on offense. Florida's been a very streaky team. That would be something that I would look at in Gainesville. Third and nine, one on one. Wesley Grimes incomplete the intended receive to Florida State. Their DBs are accepting the challenge of those one on one matchups outside. Their catch called for. See which one of these guys gets the better of each other. Caleb Carson certainly wishes he had that interception back. Benson breaks a tackle. Stood up after a game. <laughs> after the last incomplete, the teammates, even some of the security guards, doing the little seatbelt moves. They'll need a lot more than that against Keon Coleman. Again, Travis on the move, and he'll throw this one away. He came up with it, but either way, he's a great player. Big Forrest with a blitz on third down. Incomplete on the... Fortunately, they're going to be punting the football away for the similar fans. football to the NFL and college football the ball is the only thing that matters and that was well done by Florida State down to the one yard line breathing room Ooh. as ready and they play special teams there's a lot of guys in the NFL that have long careers just because of plays like that Playborn again wrapped up by Jared Verse exactly what it is maybe he got poked in the eye or something he's holding his face mask flags down and it looks like it'll be a half the distance penalty. Offense number 17. Five. He said that being in those third and manageables is where they want to be. So now having that penalty puts them in a situation where they might be a little bit more conservative with this play call. Griffiths back of the end zone to the sideline. So Ivan Mora. Minimal room towards the back of the end zone. And a line drive kick. But a good one. Coleman all the way back to the Florida State 42. Returnable. Gets to the 50. <laughs> 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 this one. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to go deep in the archives. <laughs> now run here with Toa Philly. And he's got potentially against Florida, but in Jacksonville, the dogs will have tons of fans there as Rodney Hills brought as the defensive coordinator. And he is playing like it already today. Four-man rush on third down. The out on time. 
Wide open Trey Benson. Just talked about how impressive he has been in that aspect of the game. Benson. To the 28. Two yards and so that he can be a factor in the passing game. Really impressive to see those two guys contribute in more ways and continue to develop. Benson and Toa Philly both out there, second down and eight. Flanking Jordan Travis. One on one. Incomplete. 23. And then all 207 pounds of them hits you. <laughs> Third down and eight. Three-man rush. Still some pressure, forcing Travis to backpedal. And it's broken up. Oh, that when their time comes, they have to make the plays. And right there, Garns did. 46 yards away for Ryan Fitzgerald. He stays perfect. For the majority of the season. We have to start running the football and get DeMond Claiborne in the open field to get Mitch Griffiths going. Thanks, Kevin. First and 10 for Wake Forest at the 25-yard yard line. 10 nothing. The Knowles have the lead. Ellison pushes the pile for five yards on first down into the arms of D.J. Lopez. I, I, I want to see them also push the football down the field on some go routes. Ellison! as Ellison to end the first quarter. Only 20 yards of total offense before that run. Here's Claiborne. And he'll loop. This is strength against weakness. And Wake Forest is going to have to find solutions here. So you're saying they don't have much of a chance. Well, Mitch Griffiths hasn't completed a pass yet. He's 0 for 4. He's going to try here. He's going to lob one. He's got an open man. Close to the... And Cameron Height to the right of uh, Griffiths. In the backfield, Claiborne looking for room up the middle and not finding any. Brandon, Brandon. You have to run this ball maybe three more times in a row if that's what it takes. Ellison hit, tries to move the pile, maybe got the yard back. Jet sweep. Wake Forest to try and make this a field goal game. Twelve oh six to go before halftime. And it looks like Deuce Span's gonna bring it out. He is dangerous. Span, who made about as impactful a special teams play. Oklahoma might be in some trouble. Wake Forest is back in the game against Florida State, but great field position for the Knowles at their own 43. Travis, off a of play action fake, dumps one to Rodney Hill. All the way to the 35-yard line of Wake Forest before he's finally tripped up. 23 yards. Love the usage of the screen game here by Norbell. Fake it to the back, roll, and then get it right back to him. Rodney Hill had a touchdown last week. Does a nice job here in the open field of just taking what the defense gets him, protecting the football for his offense. Now it's Trey Benson. A little stutter step to the sideline and a broken. He followed that up with 74 against Syracuse and then 26 against Duke. They want to get him rolling early because they know as it gets colder in the season, nobody's going to want to tackle a big back like him who can hit a home run. He had a huge breakout game, 200 yards against Virginia Tech a few weeks ago. Keon Coleman, one-on-one, -on -one, breaks the tackle of Kalen Carson and finds Pater. You know, sometimes as a wide receiver, you got to make moves. But right here, you're going to see Coleman lined up against Carson, and you just got to make him miss sometimes. Put that man on his knees like it was a toilet seat right there. Gets vertical. Keon Coleman is what we call a Sunday guy. We're not talking about ice cream. He's going to be playing on Sundays here pretty soon. And on that one, he got the better of Mr. Carson. And once again, for the second time in three weeks without Johnny Wilson, where you know so much 
of the defensive game plan is going to be geared towards trying to stop Keon Coleman. He adds to his ACC lead in receiving touchdowns with his eighth of the year. There it is. Catch it. Get vertical. Use that zip arm. And then it's there's this quilt of players from all over the country. And it's been very effective. Playborn on the run back. Was it awesome with the video of the alien abduction? But, uh, you know, getting those guys from all those different places, that's a beautiful way to showcase that. There's the slow mesh. Got no room to throw. And that was part of the reason that Mitch Griffiths missed that throw from behind because he didn't have a clear lane to it. A false start will now be called. False start. Offense number 54. Five yard penalty. Still second down. You're going to have home run shots over the top, one on one with the corners, which usually have outside leverage. So that's what they're trying to accomplish with the slow mesh, but they got to have a competent QB to pull it off. Nowhere to go. Patrick Pitt before he got it. Third and 18. So now when you talk about the Wake Forest on 3rd and 18, this is the matchup that they're going to try to go after. It's Jamal Banks there going up against Renardo Green. Griffiths looks that way and instead goes down. So part of the problem is the way that the quarterback is playing, but the other part of the problem is they're not separating and giving him clear lanes to throw to. End over end kick. Fair catch on the back pedal. Got them getting blown out by the Ravens last week. They're a very legit contender in the NFC. Looking forward to be on Monday Night Countdown with the guys. Trey Benson. No gain on first down. Oh, so many people talk about the offensive and defensive side of the ball, but special teams can be huge in creating those mismatches and giving you great field position throughout the game. Roll out for Travis. A flag down. He'll heave one down the sideline. Jump ball. number 70 10-yard penalty repeat second down it's Florida State offense and a little bit of a hole so from the end zone to second down and 20 Jordan Travis clean pocket this time he's got room to run he's going to direct traffic instead to the sideline coming back for a first down hookup is Coleman but a flag is thrown and they'll call Keon Coleman for a push off yeah he, he definitely pushed off by it. pass interference Offense number four, 15 yard of penalty, repeat second. The DB is going to be out of control anyway. Keep your hands to yourself. Second and 35, they'll hand one off to Kaziah Holmes. Question where Jordan Travis is now, you know, having to drop back and pass a seven step drop in his own territory. Play clock winding down, and a timeout's going to have to be called from the sideline by Mike Norvell for, for a full post game show to wrap up the night. After the Florida State timeout, third down and 36 from their own 15-yard line. They send Bell in motion. They'll run it with Keziah Holmes. And he is going to get a chunk of yards. And momentum. Punt this ball away and pin them deep. Alex Mastromano. Short kick. Mm. Morin. Fair catch. 140 pounds. And caught their eye in a game, rushing the passer for Albany against Syracuse, entered the portal, and now he's a first-round pick, it looks like. One-on-one -on -one down the sideline, back shoulder, incomplete, flag out. Jamal Banks, the intended receiver, and Cheyenne Brown is going to get caught. Pass interference, defense number 38, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. They're actually trying to make a play on the ball. So Mitch Griffiths takes a shot, gets paid off with a penalty call. He's going to run it here. And, drag. and being the guy behind the guy. Mitch has been behind Sam Hartman for quite some time, and we'll finish talking about that after this play. And he'll go down. Jared Verse. So the best field position for Wake Forest in danger of being wasted. They may call a timeout here, and they will with one on the play clock. Or the guy that does nothing that you tell him to do. You have to find the happy medium. Quarterback run on third and 15. And again. When you get tackled for a gain of one yard, you definitely got a punt. 
Evan Laura will try and pin Florida State deep, aiming for the corner. And it takes a hop into the end zone. Back to throws, Jordan Travis sets up the screen. Trey Benson cuts it back. Breaking tackles. Trey Benson off to the races. Touchdown. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a run. Way to block it up. Screen pass for a touchdown to Trey Benson covered 80 yards. Wake Forest has 81 total yards so far here in the first half. 24-7 Florida State. Oh my goodness, man. You're going to watch this guy come across. Trey Benson's going to link out, and they're going to get two offensive linemen out in front of him. And when you have big fellas that can block for the running back out in space, those short gains on screens turn into touchdowns. And watch Trey Benson cut it back across the formation and take it to the house. I mean, Trey Benson is a 220-pound monster. For him to be able to do that at that size in the passing game, right? The run after the catch. Look at this dude just built, bouncing off of dudes. He knew he was going to take it to the house. Nobody's running him down. He's getting all the way to the end zone. Through the first four games of the season, Trey Benson was struggling a bit and then got a call from Dalvin Cook. Ooh. And Dalvin Cook said, relax, you're going to be fine. You just keep hitting it and it is going to break. And in the next game against Virginia Tech, you about how they respond here, right? Football is about shifts in momentum. You got punched in the mouth. What are you going to do about it? Here's Ellison. Florida State, who can score in bunches when you're down by 17 isn't always the way to go. They got to open up the pass again. Griff is scanning the field. Held out of the ball all day. You know, both Dave Clawson and offensive coordinator Warren Aguirre said that he's been too jumpy. They need him to settle down. Let's see what he can do here on this next play. Jump ball, sideline, on third down and complete. And the always dangerous Keon Coleman in position to receive at the Florida State 35-yard line. Fair catch. Just shy of comeback, courtesy of Santino Marucci at quarterback, and we were told by Dave Clawson both quarterbacks may play today. See if he goes to Marucci. Swing pass out of the backfield toe of Philly. On the ball and maximize our possessions. That's exactly what Florida State has done so far in this game. Only a three-man rush. Travis tucks it under and runs. A Found ways in this game to have big catch and runs and create those explosives without Jordan Travis having to throw the ball 40 yards. Swing pass. Jaheim oh. Bell. Holy cow. Nick Anderson just baptized Jaheim Bell right there on that hit. Good for him. He got the first one. He probably didn't feel it. Travis floats one down the seam for Bell. Drops it in. Eight different receivers have now hooked up with Jordan Travis Bell. The latest on the last two, and they're in the red zone. And Bob, guess who that was on? The man that just lit him up and baptized him. He said, you're going to hit me like that? Okay, I'm going to get this mismatch in the slot, and I'm going to make this big play catch on you. Way to get him back, Jaheim Bell. Well, Nick Anderson originally a walk-on at Wake Forest back in 2020. He can lower the boom, but that time Bell won the battle. One-on-one. One hand! I mean, Keon Coleman's making him that new money today for sure. 
been matched up one on one all day in man coverage with Kalen Carson, and he's gotten the better of him so far. Second of the day, ninth of the season through the air for Keon Coleman, leads the ACC. Watch him attack the DB's leverage and then make the play. All you need is one hand sometimes, and look at Jordan Travis, just smooth, calm in the pocket, gives Coleman a ball that he can catch. And if you're Kalen Carson, the only thing I would say, man, is you got to get your eyes back to the ball. You're in great coverage, but Keon Coleman, that's why he plays wide out. He knows how to track a football. He was an incredible basketball player in high school as well. Averaged 26 a game as a junior. Wanted to be a two-star, two-sport athlete, and only grew up about 50 miles away from Baton Rouge. And wondered why LSU didn't offer him. Right. He goes to Michigan State. Potentially as a two-sport athlete, concentrates on football, but he was such a good basketball player. Randy Livingston was his AAU coach, and Randy Livingston said that Tom Izzo told him, if Keon Coleman had been a basketball player for us a couple of years ago, we would have gone to the Final Four. <laughs> so that's how good of a hoop player he is. And he is, as you said, going to be playing on Sundays in the not-too-distant field. Mm -hmm. I think he enjoyed all three of the touchdowns he scored. You think so? You think he enjoyed them? <laughs> hey, football players, don't, don't forget, everybody in life, they know when they've been slighted, and he made up for it right there against LSU, and he's having a great year. Demon Deacons committed that penalty on the kickoff return, so they start inside their own 10-yard line. Don't turn an ankle. No, don't turn an ankle for sure. <laughs> Justice Ellison. They've lost the last three times that they've played against Wake Forest, and they're trying to send a message, not just to Wake, but the rest of the country, that they're one of the best in the country. Griffiths. Down he goes again. Fans are the ones that were here, aren't here anymore, and I, I think that he will simplify things for them on offense, but also give everybody a feeling like they have a chance to put some points on the board. Coleman on the punt return. To the his own, and Bob, I don't know, maybe Chris Rinky was just as old as you were by the time he was done playing <laughs> at Florida State. <laughs> Travis still on the attack, looking downfield. Down the sideline, incomplete. He and Mackenzie Milton went back and forth as to which one was going to be the starter a few years ago. His, his Florida State career did not get off to a smooth start. And he'll run here. And hey. after sliding hit from behind. A great player for Wake Forest, but that should have been a flag. Travis had already slid. Blitz coming, looking once again for Keon. A great player for Wake Forest, but that should have been a flag. Travis had already slid. Blitz coming, looking once again for Keon Coleman. He's hoping for a flag, and there it is. Kalen Carson will get yeah, hit. Yeah, so you're going to see right here, he already slides, and then he gets hit. That's a, that's a penalty. I don't know what the ref is looking at right there. But then right here, when you talk about holding on the defense, listen, man, sometimes if you can't cover them, you do got to hold them. And, and that back. Pass interference. Defense number one. The penalty is an automatic first down. Intercepted. Wow. Tried to squeeze one into a tight window, and Nick Anderson jumped the route and nearly picked it off, and it will be a field goal try. Yeah, he tried to squeeze in there to Ja'Kai Douglas. Nick Anderson said, I might not be able to play great man coverage, but I can play zone. Reads the quarterback's eyes, gets in there, and breaks it up. And that's now two. Two, Bob, interceptions that Wake Forest could have gotten that seemed to be drops. I always say DBs play DB for a reason, but in a game like this, going up against the number four team in the country, you, you got to make that catch. Again, Ryan Fitzgerald, perfect so far this season. Play clock is winding down to three, two, and one. And flags everywhere, as it appeared Wake Forest had too many players on the field. But very late to substitute was Florida State, which would mean Wake would have an opportunity to substitute. And I think that's the argument from Dave Clawson. Illegal substitution, defense, the penalty is declined, the field goal is good. Substitutions as well, but he didn't win that argument with the ref. 
keeping our eyes out for him in the second half because he did provide a late game spark last week against Pitt. First half for Keon Coleman. An 80 yard screen and run as well for Trey Benson. And we'll see if there will be a quarter. He's we need you to play well. He has not done that, but they're sticking with him here in the second half. Devon Claiborne maintains his balance and picks up a first down. And Marucci was warming up on the sideline to start the second half. A little hookup here, though, with Jamal Banks. And that is another first down for Wake Forest. Shaheen Brown made the stop on the second completion and a flag down as well. Personal foul. Force call the tackle. Defense number 38. That 15 yard penalty is added to the end of the. Grab that back collar and pull the guy back like that. And it doesn't even need to necessarily be in the collar. If you grab from the nameplate as well, it's the same foul as Claiborne. Slow mesh. A bullet to the outside. And the catch is made. Again, it's Banks. It did nothing in the second half. Griff is on the move. Runs to the sideline. Playing so many guys on this defense. Claiborne again. A single point on us in the second half, and the Blue Devils didn't. Inside the 10-yard line is back. Kitty routes on the outside, and Griffiths is, is completing them to them. Why did it take them to be down 34-7 to start doing that? Claiborne. Outs. Going all the way back to the Clemson win on September 23rd, but threatening here, Wake Forest. Second and goal. Another run with Claiborne. Not much. A run, but I'd like to see them once again attack this matchup down here to the bottom of the screen. Griffiths to throw, backpedaling, and on the move again. Squeezes one in. He's pleased with the way that Mitch Griffiths has come out after halftime and was distributing the football, but I agree with you. They should have gone for it here. And from Deuce Span in the first half and outscored the Blue Devils. 21-0 in the second half to win going away in front of a sold-out crowd. Here is Span. Now to about the 32. During the return, holding, receiving team number 47, 10-yard penalty. First. And Dave and Wayne were all just working, trying to Stop right. the triple option in Watford game. Sack him as a group. Sack him as a group. Yeah, it is. And it's a brotherhood between those coaches. And we'll talk about just how Coach Fuller makes a fuller impact right after this play. Jet sweep. Going nowhere. They've got their kids, Jack and Aiden. But he said she's the most unselfish person he's ever met in his entire life, and it allows him to pour all of himself into this football team. Travis, long throw to the sideline. And Mike Elko at Duke last week, and now all of these coaches have crossed paths as they've ascended up the ranks to become coordinators and head coaches. And a wobbly kick. Mastromano got it away. Morin, football players at Wake Forest University, so it recognizes their significance and the role that Wake Forest has played in integrating Division I sports in the South as Justice Ellison has nowhere to go at the line of scrimmage and a very late flag comes out. Yeah, before he gets that flag, I just want to say we appreciate your sisters groundbreaking, paving the way for all of us to be able to enjoy sports the way that we do After today. The play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 10. Into it, I know they're down big, but still come out and execute at a high level. Justice Ellison, again, not much. The Institute to become Bethune-Cookman College, which we know it as now. She went on to become a presidential advisor and one of the earliest black female activists that have helped lay the foundation. The black women's education, just an amazing story. And throw low to the outside. Some of these players have had in their generations before them to pave the way for us to live the life that we do. And Wake Forest going forward on fourth and six and fail them continue to try to get the football to Jamal Banks, but when they do, they got to make catchable balls be the throw. Trey Benson. Crab crawls out to a for backs that they really trust to get it done. Play action. Travis up the seam in stride, breaking free to Kai Douglas. Ankle tackle, saved 
the touchdown as he stumbles after Evan Slocum tripped him up to the 38-yard line of Wake. And just like that, they run a play-action pass right over the top. Jordan Travis finds Ja'Kai Douglas. And Jasheen Davis called for roughing the... And making plays is a good sign. Kalen Carson has done a nice job limiting his yardage. It's been those big plays of a touchdown here or there. So you say he's holding on for dear life because he certainly was. He's trying to make sure that he continues to attack this matchup for the rest of the game. Quick toss to Benson. Out of bounds at the 17. He now has 15 consecutive games with multiple touchdowns accounted for. It's a new FSU record as well. And a swing pass here caught by Benson. Fights for extra yardage. He might have a first. They might have gave him the first down just on the extra effort. <laughs> a cold start. <laughs> Another touch for Benson. Ooh. Vibed well with the team. He's only been there for a little bit, but they think he's been there for four years. He's bought into the culture and been a big part of their defense. Of course, today, the showing hasn't been the best for them as a whole, but he has had a fairly good year. Travis has a one-on-one. -on -one. Incomplete. Down inside the three-yard line. Third down and eight. Three-man rush. Back shoulder at the pylon. Already two for two today and 10 for 10 on the season. Hits the upright. Continues the roll, Bob. Back to you. All right, Kevin, thanks very much. Tate Carney starts this drive. We've got BYU in Austin to take on Texas. Duke Louisville this afternoon as well. And then, of course, Coach Prime with a... Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number seven, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Gotta keep the fingers out of the back of that jersey. Griffiths, slant, Jamal Banks. To Mitch had a little bit of effort in them in the second half, and they're just letting Mitch kind of play a little bit more freely, and they're moving the ball at least. 17, 21 points in this game. That's not enough to beat Florida State. Slow mesh. Griffiths pulls it down, and Florida State. He has to set back to be able to give himself space to wait on those throws. Well, this time he's able to put one over the middle. And how about the hurdle job? And who has Michigan beaten to justify them being number one? I guess that would be my question. And they may well be number one, but they're going to have a chance to prove. The way Michigan has looked, regardless of who they're playing, has been the most dominant. Griffiths inside the 10. Down to the center. They're not having beaten anyone. Well, they've got Penn State and Ohio State left. So as Chris said, it will shake itself out as Tate Carney. All said and done, who is in undefeated at the end of the year after they played the, the, the thickness of their schedule will be in the college football player. Carney into the end zone. There's the first touchdown allowed. In Sensational, and he's played himself into the Heisman conversation. Back to throw again here. Drops it in. Kyle Morlock all the way. 22 of 34 for 359 yards and three touchdowns. He's also, I believe, their leading rusher today. He's doing it all. Again with the late substitution. Both of those and Jordan Travis told, thank you. Like, thank you for recognizing everything that I was feeling, but also reminding me that if we don't do this and I'm not having fun, then there's no point in going out here. Well, he's been having fun, that's for sure. And he tries to extend the play here. A shovel pass to nowhere. For it to be a pass, not a sack. So for Davis's 18th career sack, and the first of the day for Wake Forest. All day to throw for Travis. Well, a portier right there was trying to pour it on and get some extra yardage before he had completed the catch. They'll run it with Trey Benson, and he finds a creep. Just to set up the field goal. And 
the seas parted, and Trey Benson scores from 18 yards out. His second rushing touchdown of the day. Bob, seas parted is probably the best way to describe that run because the offensive line didn't allow Trey Benson. So Mustafa being looked at over on the sideline. He was able to head off the field on his own, though. Ryan Fitzgerald on for the point after. After Trey Benson's second touchdown of the day. One on the ground, one through the air. That Georgia game to truly be on the road no. because it's in Jacksonville? It's not a pure road game. It's just not an offense. Yeah, yeah. For that moment forever. And now they're bringing him in here to get him some more reps to see if they're going to make a change or do something here in the future at the quarterback position. Tate Carney and Carney and look at what it feels like to finally do it and see it come to fruition yeah seeing the scene in that Wake Forest locker room as they pick up a first down here at the end of that game last week and now shortcomings of the rest of their roster so from what they saw from Mitch Griffiths through the spring and fall camp they thought all right we're gonna be good because Mitch knows the system and he's doing a good job it just hasn't this season this Wake Forest offense is the only ACC offense six years in a row to average 13 that they're not the guy, right? Sam had some struggles here, and he had to overcome those, and maybe that's the same thing that'll happen for Mitch Griffiths or Santino can go out here and take this quarterback job over. On the first day of camp, he was second on the team last year in yards and had six touchdowns yeah, and they also as well. A.T. Perry to the NFL. Like, right. They had a lot of things that that have gone not gone their way and a lot of players that have moved on to other places. Well, Kevin, Florida State up by much more than that, and that allows them to put Tate Rodemaker in the game to give him a chance to play at quarterback. So both coaches going to their backup QBs with the score lopsided midway through the fourth. And Rodemaker will hand one to Keziah Holmes. Three yards and three touchdowns any day of the week. Good opportunity for him to get a nice six minutes of action here at the end of the game. Play action. Seam shot. Has the crosser. <laughs> Harry on. This feels good when you're a quarterback and you come in, you know, in relief time and that first pass you throw. You see it completed, and it goes for a big game. This time, Keziah Holmes. As the season goes on, early in the year, you're seeing Caleb Williams and Michael Penix Jr. put up these video game-style numbers. But Jordan Travis, now as they get into the thick of this ACC schedule, is going to be playing against really good teams and putting up really good numbers. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. So Tate Rodemaker got prettier football than Michael Penix Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up the middle goes Hill, and he stood up after a gain of three yards. It, if you, has been a great Heisman statement for him. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number 54, his first of the game. 15-yard penalty, the down Green pass. That might as well have been an 80-yard throw with him throwing it 60 yards down the field. Some of that stuff does matter, even though we don't love to admit it. Rodemaker. A third down scramble. Passes, and I don't think that that's talked about enough. You want to talk about accuracy? It's not always about having the strongest arm. Sometimes it's about putting the ball exactly where it's supposed to be at. And Jordan Tate, he should certainly be on people's list, and I think he will be by the time the draft comes around. And sometimes you live this. Yeah, and, and to your point, look at what was going on at Florida State a few years ago. When it didn't start out great for Jordan Travis and the team around him wasn't as good as they are today. Now you allow him to go through some of those growing pains. You trust him. You stick with him. The team around him is better. He's playing better. Didn't even play two full seasons of college football and ask them to go save an NFL franchise when they're not even 23, 24 years old yet. Yeah, it happens all the time. And... I try to tell people this. We are just starting the college football day here on ABC, ESPN as well. Ivan Mora will kick it away, and no one back deep to receive for Florida State. So down to the last minute and 10 seconds. The Knowles. 
Wanamaker gets the clock started, and for Florida State, they will stay perfect. They will break their three-game losing streak head-to-head -head against